With the start of the new unprecedented fantasy draft, Filthy McRich Arse is looking patiently from the distance to see what his potential new franchise might draft. Doesn't want to pull the trigger yet, but if there's a good enough squad, he might do so. And of course, they get three choices, three main choices. There's an interim owner for now deciding those players. And from there, it's all players nobody wants. So with that being said, you might be able to get any three players you want. However, it is still a money talks league. And of course, with big names like this, they don't have to play for us. It's If a guy like Drew Brees gets offered by us, he could choose to sit out. He knows he's going to get paid anyways. But he's not going to play because he knows there's no chance. So why risk himself for no chance at winning early on? The only guys you can get are impressionable young players. Guys like Mahomes, maybe Lamar Jackson. However, they're gone. Maybe a Deshaun Watson, perhaps. But right now, it's really going to be guys that are disgruntled. You know, guys that are trying to rebuild their image in the NFL. Or guys that are very young starting out in their career. Maybe even disrespected by their peers and we interviewed Jair Alexander and he was willing to play for this team and show that he is good no matter where he plays show that he is one of the top players starting in this league and of course at a young 22 years of age he's a great number one pick for us out of three supposed to go 19 took him six Jair, really good pick. Moving on to the second pick, I don't know if there's a better name for the situation or just on the board than Mr. Miles Garrett, 23 years old, star development because of you know what, trying to rebuild his image, getting himself another second chance. The NFL saying, if you want another chance, go to this developmental team, a team that you know isn't going to be nearly as good as the rest. Show that you can handle losing. Show that you can compose yourself. He agreed. And he is our second pick out of three. Now this one might come as a shocker. But DK Metcalf. A guy that was undervalued in his entire career. Wanting. Well entire career as being a rookie career. Of course disrespected as a guy that just wasn't supposed to be anything. You know he fell down in the draft quite a bit. Finally get an opportunity to be selected high. Chosen as one of the top tier players, wanting to give it his all, and he is going to be coming to our team as the third and final selection of the NFL Fantasy Draft. The relocation process has begun. All right, so after adjusting the lineup, 69 overall, Filthy McRichars already <laughs> debating whether or not he uh, made the right decision or not, and whew, what a squad. So right tackle, Mylotta, 58 overall with star development. He's 22 years old, so he's got a lot of time to develop, and he's a big fella over that 58 overall. Still a 58 overall. Billy Price, 24 years old, and once upon a time was okay. Decent pick. Uh, the interior, meh. Uh, got some young names, at least. You know, you got, got, got a guy like Scotty Miller, 22 years old. Super slippery. Kind of remember him from uh, you know, the Buccaneers for a moment. Equinemia St. Brown, a guy that the Packers were hoping to develop, but an injury kind of derailed that chance. Calvin Benjamin, once upon a time, a really good player. Obviously, no one wants to touch him now. We move him to tight end. I don't know why no one else tried to do that unless they did. And of course, we will be moving to a 4-3 defense. Josh Jackson gets to join his uh, pal, Jair Alexander. I uh, don't know how uh, confident the owner is here because... It wasn't a great duo in Green Bay, even though Jair is obviously a monster. But a chance to redo things here, obviously, outside of the first three, easily the best pick. Defensively, though, this is its a squad that you need to work on. Of course, the quarterback, starting quarterback, will be Tyree Jackson, a guy that uh, a lot of upside for speed, great throw power, accuracy is the big trash. We have our first successful breakout player, Mr. Josh Adams, who gets 10,000 XP added on. Not really much. Maybe it is a bit of a surprise. 1-1-1. One, one, and one. How in the world have we won games? Could this be the shocking story of a lifetime? Of course, we did not play the game against the Browns, so very just an impressive success for Josh Adams. We had a couple other breakouts that did not succeed, but Josh Adams, not bad, pal. You know, we have to make sure we develop him as... A power back. Uh, of course, that's... Yeah, I was hoping that he would become a beast. And it looks like uh, that 
may be a dream that's possible now. Find yourself some talent here. 87 trucking. I like it. I like it, big fella. Now, this is tough. I'm thinking the choice for me would be the first or the second one. The second, uh, the third one's okay, but I like the options here. You have black, blue, or white. Well, this is literally blue or white. Um, I know you could have full blue and all that, but I think this is the best looking one. This one or the first one, ironically, that's the one they disliked the most. Stripe on the shoulder. I wish they would show you in game because. I can't really tell by looking at these, but I think the the middle one looks the best to me. Style 2. Ugh. There's a lot of people suggesting, and I, I style 2. That's all, all I can tell you. And now this one, I have no idea. So we play against the Rams, Seahawks. The Rams. I am the Rams. We play against the Seahawks, Cardinals, and Niners. So it would be two dome teams if we go back to Dome, the Niners have a high stadium. This is a tough one. It's a tough decision. Of course, you want to try to save money as well, spending this kind of money. Absolutely not a canopy top. Uh, maybe a futuristic stadium. Definitely not a hybrid. Uh, it would either be got a basic traditional. This is a tough decision. I think you can always add a, a Dome, can't you? So I kind of want to go with like a basic futuristic. This seems to be very good. I'm going to go with deluxe traditional. I think we'd always add a dome later on if you guys want that, but I think I think that's what I like. Can we stop winning? I mean, oh no, let's win. So after the first season as the Rams, final season really, uh, the team finishes with a 4-11-1 record, which is actually a bit better than we thought we were going to do. Of course, overalls have not changed basically at all. Uh, a new chief scout needs to be signed, I suppose. Sean McVay does stick around, surprisingly. Uh, where's the scout? O-line overall? I mean, this is not a bad scout. I'll be... Can count on us. What? I don't even know what that means. Uh, this is a pretty good, uh, coaching staff. So, if we can keep them around, we will. You know, they, they did a lot with what they had. So, you know, we're happy with that. S practice squad players. Let's just take a look at the season. Just quick glance. Take a look at those stats real quick. And then move on to the more important parts of this franchise. And a couple impressive wins. Beating the Cowboys... The Ravens, Falcons, and Panthers. I mean, winning any of these games are big, but those teams had pretty good records. They really did. The Ravens were like 8-3. I don't know about the Cowboys, but, you know, it's the Cowboys. Even though it's a fantasy, they probably had someone decent. Tyree Jackson with a 24 touchdown, 9 pick. Season, 3,400 yards. Not bad considering. Josh Adams, he had two breakouts. He was only able to get the first one, though. Receiving, not really that impressive. For anyone, maybe outside of Kelvin Benjamin, I suppose. Offensive line, actually not bad. Miles Garrett with absolutely no help. Gets 11 sacks. And hey, Quentin Bell, not bad. Four sacks, not terrible at all. Jair with three interceptions and 18. That's not 18 deflections. Three deflections, yikes. Joey Sly, the kicker. I don't know when we got Vedvik, but apparently we did. Missed five of his 15. Corey uh, Bjornquez, I would not be able to tell you if that's actually how it said, ends up with an okay season, about 53 yards per punt. Offensive yardage, dead last, as expected. Defensive yardage, very close to dead last. The only chance, I mean, quick glance, Patrick Mahomes on the Seahawks. Quick glance at just where these guys ended up. Lions with Lamar struggling anyways. Rookie of the year, potentially. We did not get it. Number three is not terrible. Ty Summers at number two. Had a couple of names there. Of course, all these other uh, awards are very unlikely to be had. But here we are to the most important part. I mean, we'll take a look at the developments, which I don't think a single player earned a dev up. But maybe Tyree, you never know. Could have got lucky with a star. That'd be huge. And he did not, unfortunately. So we do reveal any devs that were hidden Anyone go up in development? Ty Summers did. So did Burr Kervin. Uh, Burr Kervin needs a contract. I wasn't going to give him one, but I think we might. And Miles uh, Garrett with uh, a superstar development. That is a huge one. Power specialist with secure tackler. Okay, so we actually landed some decent ones. I forgot to change it to a 4-3, but honestly, it really does not matter. It just, it just simply doesn't. Um, but obviously, once we actually play, we will. Uh, it would appear that we are going to be re-signing Kerr Burvin, Burr Kervin, whatever the hell his name name, Ball Kervin. 
I wasn't going to, but now we will. Uh, he's asking for slightly more. Nothing big, though. And hey, our uniform's looking decent. I actually like those. Okay. I probably should have done a little bit more actual research on our team before, uh, you know, making the decisions. But I actually really like that. Okay. So moving on to free agency after the Texans win the first ever technical Super Bowl. Because, you know, year 100 finished with a, a real a, a real curveball. Don't worry about the league password. It's obviously not the same. Someone's like, I'll see about that. So, of course... In a fantasy, you're not going to see many names hit free agency, although you do see a guy like Tony Pollard. I think we have the running back for the future. I would love a guy like Tony Pollard because he's he's super fast, and where else are we going to spend the money? However, I just don't think it's a need. It's it's not someone we absolutely need. We'll keep looking around. Maybe there's somebody. You got Edo Smith there. Ronald Jones is there. The problem is I feel like you guys would be pretty mad if we didn't at least sign somebody. So we'll try to find somebody before we start this thing up. Because, you know, once again, we could pretty much... Ooh. Nikhil's only normal, though. We pretty much use a starter anywhere. I couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist. Tony Pollard. Give him a five-year, $27 million deal. We have tons of money right now. By the time we actually have to sign players, other guys can be let go. I don't think Tony Pollard's going to start because I actually do really like Josh Adams. But it's going to be one of those situations where we just kind of take a look at, you know, our best options going forward. And uh, realistically, whoever plays the best will be the ultimate starter. So free uh, free agency preseason is going to be very big, very big for us as we're going to have to decide who ends up starting where. Of course, Tyree Jackson right now is primed to be the starter. However, we do have a draft class here that we will have to take all candidates seriously. Uh, as much as I think, wow, really? A throw power? Tyree Jackson is looking to... Kill someone, honestly. He's just, he's looking to murder. Low accuracy, high throw power. That's just a recipe for kill. But as you can see here, he's over 70 for every throwing ability outside of awareness, which isn't really a throwing ability. Uh, but I mean, he's got a chance. He's got a chance. He's got a chance to be decent. Our draft board is complete. We are ready to start drafting. And of course, we will be using a real draft class for this one. The Packers with the number one selection. Maybe the Ravens weren't as good as I thought. The Packers are going to take, with their number one selection, Chase Young, a guy that we had very high on our board. Unfortunately, no longer an option. The Raiders take left tackle Andrew Thomas. Quarterback Joe Burrow goes to the Ravens at number three. And then number four, Jeff Akuda goes to the Giants. Now, this is a tough selection because we have many of options. And by a many, I mean a lot. We still have Epinensa. Uh, looks very freaking good. You still have C.D. Lamb. You still have Jerry Judy. We could really use a safety. We do have Jordan Love on the list because, of course, he is a quarterback. He looks very good. If he's there second round, I think we may take him. This is basically what our draft board looks like. Uh, you know, we have some guys near the end that could be worth it. Ruggs, very fast player, could go for him. Uh, I don't think we would go with a safety because we have a lot of third-round guys. Isaiah Simmons would be sickly. Uh, but of course, right now we, you know, we've got two really good linebackers from uh, just playing throughout the season. Maybe we should add another linebacker to the list, but that's fine. Right now, it's between trade down, Epinesa, Jerry Judy, and C.D. Lamb. Uh, we can go back to the Steelers and see if they are willing to make a trade. We trade pick five, Shaquille Griffin, and a fourth next year for pick seven from the Falcons in fifty-eight next year. They hop the Vikings and technically us to select wide receiver C.D. Lamb, a very big steal because that was probably who we were going to take, if not. And with A.J. Epinensa taken there, it is almost certain that we are looking to take Jerry Judy. Uh, took a little bit of a loss at wide receiver instead of C.D. Lamb. However, I don't know, it's a tough one because I really, I didn't know who I wanted. I really don't. I just feel like... We just needed to take best available, and I suppose it's between a, a safety or a Jerry Judy. Um, Metcalf with Jerry Judy would be one hell of a combination, even though we're lacking, uh, what is it called? We are lacking quarterback talent a little bit. Could go with a safety, though. The safeties look decent. Nah, they're going to go with Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy's the move. Let's go. 76 overall, 21-year-old Jerry Judy. The new number two wide receiver for the Salt Lake City Flyers. 91 across the board for the speed ratings. Decently agile. 
Uh, where's his run block? 50 run block. Decent player. Decent player for sure. I think we made a good choice. We ended up with a second round pick for next year. We are going to move to the next round. I don't know if I want to go to our pick yet because we may need to make a trade up depending on who's there. You do, see, you do see all the quarterbacks still. You see Tua might be a move that we might need to make. I'm not sure. Uh, are any of our other players there? There's some you know, linemen, which I think are some of our biggest needs by far out of anyone. Early second round player. If, if Nyang is there, I might take him, which hopefully he is, but I don't really know. Darnell Taylor to the Packers, what a move. Swift to the Bears, what a move. Then our pick would be, wow, a lot of running backs are going. I think an offensive lineman might be in the cards here. Maybe a little disappointed that we didn't go safety because you do have Justin Jefferson. Doesn't look much worse, if not maybe even better than Jerry Judy. He is taller after all. Uh, how young is Niang? What's his name? Niang? I don't even know. Uh, looks decent. What about Muti or Mutai? Decent. What about Damian Lewis? Really just looking for the uh, the speed ratings. So right now looking at these guys, the next pick, if not one of the linemen, would be a safety. So I think it's going to be Lucas Niang. There we go. Ooh, 69 over. However, he is hidden, which is a big win. Uh, super strong, as we expected. A little bit faster than I expected, actually. Maybe you guys didn't. Maybe you're like, I expected him to be even faster. But this is uh, our new tackle don't know which position, left or right, but he's going to play one of the tackle spots. Once again, we're going to do similar as the last time. We're going to go to next round and see who's going to be there at 32. See if any of the players are there. Hopefully one of them is. Uh, all the QBs still are there. Uh, the free safety Ashton Davis is still there. Free safety is a big need for us. He is 23, a little bit older for you know a starting rookie. But I'm happy with that if we can make a trade to the Packers. We trade 58 next year, the pick we just got. A six round next year in Morrow for pick 65, which I think is a big win. Some of the talent in this year's class looks very, very good. Uh, and now I'm actually kind of taking it. I'm, I'm deciding what I want to do. There are several quarterbacks. You have uh, Tua, Jordan Love, and you even have Fromm. Uh, I don't think I'd be going for Herbert. I think, uh, well, I mean, he's not bad either. But, yeah, I don't know if I would go for Herbert. But I think... The number one pick. It was gonna. I was actually gonna go with Love, but I think with how many quarterbacks are there, we're gonna go with Ashton Davis. Hidden seventy four, maybe even one of the best picks of the class for us. Uh, Ninety one injury. What else? Do we have sixty seven catching. Is all right. Block shed. He's definitely a bit of a project, but a good starting free safety. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know one of the decent quarterbacks is there. And who is it gonna be? Tua goes to the Giants, which gives us the best available after him, which I think might be Jordan Love. What else do we have on our draft board? So we have tight end Albert uh, O, which you guys kind of were mad at me for getting rid of, so maybe we can redeem ourselves by selecting him. I think we're going to go with Jordan Love. Jordan Love it is. Head in development, 70 overall. Uh, already better than Tyree for those reasons. Really accurate, decently fast. Uh, no real elusiveness stats, but very uh, tough. With his injury and toughness. Uh, a really solid quarterback. Obviously still a project as well. But we're landing a very good draft right now. I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep moving on until one of our players goes. And then we might make another trade up from to the Broncos. That seems like a very Broncos-like pick. I don't know why. So that tells me that's a very Broncos-like pick. A lot of quarterbacks going in the third round, of course. Kind of see that a lot. Uh, where is the first player going to go? And how important is the first player? Albert O, though. We could use a proper young tight end. We're going to lose him. Let's see if we can go to the Broncos. I tried so hard. Couldn't get the trade. Raiders end up taking Albert O. Don't even know if we need to trade up anymore, to be honest. Yeah, it turns out we don't. I really wanted Albert O, and that was pretty much our last pick, you know, in this slot. Uh, our next pick would either be Jalen Rieger, who is fast. We don't really need him or one of the corners slash this guard. Guard's the best available, so we're just going to take him now. And he is. He actually he actually might be better than the other guy. Who The other, the other guy was 69 hidden. Ooh, this guy is not very athletic, though. He's, he is a huge guard, but he's not going to be moving too often. And I think for now, I can't remember who else we have, but I'm going to keep moving until one of the corners goes. I think uh, the... The hell is his name? One of the corners was better than the other. I think Parnell was slightly better than the other guy, but really, if we can just get one of the corners, because we just need one, one guy to keep us going, just so we have somebody super young to work with. That wasn't him. 
As soon as we see one go, then we'll try to trade up. But I suppose we save that third round for next year. Donovan Peoples-Jones. Corner's still there, looking good. Colin Johnson. There's some decent steals. Parker Braun. A lot of good running backs. Maybe we should have tried to go for one. Matt Hennessy. Willie Gay. That name always gets me, man. We send a fifth next, a seventh next, and Tremont Smith to the Packers for their fifth round pick now. First round, first pick in the fifth round, and I think we do have Rieger still there. Soriano looks decent. We might be able to get him a little bit later. So it's really down to whoever we want out of these two. Uh, this guy looks a little bit better, but he is a little bit older, and his potentials are slightly worse, but his combine grade is better. Uh, both look decent. Parnell Motley or Kindle Vildor. Vildor is a little bit bigger. This is a tough one. He's not much better, and he's a little bit older. All right, so 674399 versus 671397. 447 versus 442. 35295. 36394. So he's a little bit worse at jumping. Catching is a. Oh, we got to go for Vildor because the catching, man, that's clutch. And he is hidden. He's 23, though. Yeah, cornerback is not going to be a problem on this team, simply put. Yeah, this guy looks very good. All right. So with the sixth round pick, I think this will be the final pick of the draft for us. Unless we trade up for a punter, which might be a little bit debatable. Rieger's still there, though. Okay, dude. I think we have to go for Rieger, then. 666 overall normal, but he is 21, and he's very fast. Yeah, Rieger, I mean, he was there. Gotta take him. Go to the next round and see who's there. If any of the guys we have on the list are, we'll uh, we'll trade up. Would have really been nice to get Alberto. Really would have been. Uh, both are there, so we'll try to get to the Raiders and Packers. But I don't know if we have a six round. We trade 223 and Batson for 193 from the Packers. Don't know why Batson's always a guy that the AI just doesn't care about. Give them Kaiser, Jefferson, and Raymond for a seventh round pick, which is a steal for them. Thing is, we don't really need them. So we have pick one and three in this round. First things first, of course, is this lineman because he actually looks pretty damn decent. Maybe we got a steal again with Hidden. We didn't, but a 71 overall on this team. Oh, he's actually really good. Okay, so once again, Hidden is obviously gigantic, right? Obviously. But having a starting caliber player like that in the seventh round is still a massive steal. And then our punter, Cody Grace, a kick power, A-plus kick power. Ooh, 65 overall. He does have massive kick power, but his accuracy is massively lacking. And, of course, that will end the draft. We'll go over the first round and... It's pretty much that. That's that's really all it is. So did any other team relocate? I don't think they did. Maybe only one team relocates a year. I'm not sure. We might see the Chargers follow suit at some point. Chase Young, number one. Andrew Thomas, two. Burrow, Okuda, Lamb, Espinenza. Uh, it's, it's like N Epinesa. Jedrick, Willis Jr., Derek Brown to the Jets. Not a bad pick, but they seem to draft DT a lot. Fulton, Simmons to the Colts is a steal. T. Higgins, not a bad player. Delpit, decent steal. McKinney right after. Not, I mean, makes sense. Both similar. Uh, Murray, what else do we have? Any crazy names? Bunch of linemen. Rugs to the Buccaneers at 22. Uh, that's pretty much the first round. A couple of names you wouldn't expect. High second round players. There was actually some decent ones, though. Definitely some, some steals. But I'm very happy with our draft. If you guys wanted to see, once again, who we had, obviously we're not going to look at the devs. Uh, but this is who we landed, a very full class. We landed one hidden, two, three, four, five, six. Six hidden players. That is really good. Obviously, a lot are most likely going to be star, but that's beside the point. And that's pretty much going to be the video. This was the uh, the introduction, per se. This actually took me a long time to record. So if you guys are actually excited for this series as much as I am, it's going to be a very challenging one. If we can get to 500 year one, that would be a shocker, honestly. But it's going to be a challenging one. We still have a decent usable roster, but a bunch of normal dev guys while... Pretty much the entire league at this point is probably an 84 overall. We're in a 72. Uh, yeah, we landed a great draft, but still a long, long, long road to head. And of course, the Flyers trying to brand themselves as a top-tier NFL team. 
This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy the video. Next video will be all of preseason, maybe week one, but all of preseason for sure because there's some, uh, some big question marks on who gets to start. Not really sure where we're going to go from there. But Filthy's got to be pretty happy with the first offseason of his uh, NFL owner tenure. And that's pretty much that. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you're new to the channel, maybe subscribe, like the video if you liked it, follow me on Twitter, Drumpy Care. And that's about it. I'm not exactly sure what I'm planning on for this series. It might just be a once a week thing until Niners ends. But anyways, hope we come back for the next video. But until next video, see ya!